I design with the narrative quite a lot. You open the gate and it squeaks a little bit. And then you come in and you you hear the dripping water. And then the ground crunches under your feet. You have to negotiate nature. So you have to duck a little bit. It's intentional. I was told by my high school guidance counselor that I would be good at air traffic controlling or architecture. I always had architecture on the back of my mind because I used to sit at the kitchen table. My father was a printer. He'd bring home these big, long sheets of paper and I'd put them on the kitchen table and I'd draw underground cities with people and cars and lights and all that kind of stuff. That all came naturally, but I didn't put it all together until I was 27 in art school. People started noticing when I did the first Ram Earth project. The world just came unglued because they'd never heard of it before, even though it's thousands of years old. When you think about it, the Ram Earth that you guys have been photographing is plaster. It's sand, aggregate, and water, and uh, little clay, and all the stuff that is stucco that you see on all these buildings. I'm like, why put another layer on it when the whole wall is made out of the same stuff? The material just basically took me by the back of the collar and said, you're going to do this for a while. My client kept wanting to put a house on that site. His name was Rick, too. I said, no, please, Rick. Nobody's going to want to live there and come down that alley and go in their front door. Can't do it. So he called me one Sunday night and he said, Rick, I got an idea. How about if we build you a new studio right there? And I'm like, OK. And so that was a Sunday night. Monday, I designed it. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I did the CDs. And Monday, I was digging. And he's like, why are you going so fast? And I'm like, Rick, I was just afraid your medication was going to wear off. And I wouldn't be able to actually really do this. And so we did it. It's really great because they're working in architecture. I discovered his work in my first year in architecture school. It just clicked with me and my, my sensibilities, I guess, and, and I wanted to learn um, from him, basically. His work is beautiful and so pragmatic and, and to the point that it's poetic. The idea was to have the sun come from the south, hit that wall and bounce back into the room. And so we can have a rammed earth building with no lights on during the day. Well, that end wall of the bathroom is glass, right? Translucent glass. That blue li light on the ceiling indicates that no one's in the bathroom. So you don't have to keep walking down there and checking. You just see if it's open like that. Daylight comes through that skylight at the end at noon. It's lunchtime, guys. See the light? It's easy to get complicated in architecture and design in general to kind of rein that back you know, the complexity, rein it back into something pure and simple um, that's really about the space and about the space around it as well. It's difficult and it's challenging. The diversity is just amazing for our firm. Right now, I think two thirds of the office are from other countries. And then I learn so much from them. And so it's a give and take. They learn from me, I learn from them. It's a, it's a real learning studio. Architecture I studied at one of the technical universities in Austria. During my final thesis project, I realized that I was particularly interested in atmosphere and didn't know enough about lighting, which pushed me towards an additional education in lighting design. And I went into a bookstore in Graz, and there was Rick's first book. And I was just moved to my core, and I'm like, this is exactly what fascinates me about architecture. It grounds you in, in your environment, and it's always reduced to the essence of what it needs to be, and nothing else. What I obviously had no clue about is that a few years later, I would go visit these buildings that were documented and described in this book. If you look at our first book, As It Works, I pretty much did all that lighting. Uh, myself, and it's not that good. When Amangiri came along, we hired a, a lighting designer from Stockholm. The only one we could find that was um, working through the qualities of atmosphere versus just 
light fixtures. And lighting being an ephemeral medium, you sometimes can't quite grasp it, but it has the power to have an emotional impact. Claudia was the main person on a bunch of projects. The lighting design quality is just so superior. We always had a really great way of connecting and it was apparent to everyone who worked with us that there was just a wavelength maybe, a way that we could communicate. And then we became romantically involved and when I actually joined Rick here in Tucson, my rule was I'm not gonna work for you or with you. We said like, well, maybe, you know, we managed to do this before, so why don't we try again? And then it worked out pretty well. We're currently in my studio that I co-found with Rick nine years ago. It's called CLL Concept Lighting Lab. Somehow she's right on the cusp of the knowledge for lighting design, and I never see her studying. I don't know how she does it. Very often you will hear people not talk about good lighting. People will usually point out when lighting is lacking, when there is not enough, when it's glary. When it's good, it's just accepted. We are in a historic building from 1900. It's an adobe structure, now painted white. So there's a lot of general bounds in the space. Because of our proximity to the street, we have a film on our windows that diffuses the light. Then we have these few skylights, adding another quality at a different level. Everyone has a task light, which is the most essential light for working. And then we have indirect uplight, which comes from the floor or from the ground and was a conscious choice to be respectful with the historic structure. We try our lighting to be more in the background, just doing its thing without calling attention or without calling too much attention, let's say that. We're at home. Tucson, Arizona. And West University neighborhood right up the street from Time Market. This house caught our attention, but we, we weren't sure if, if it was in, in our reach. We loved it because of its elevation, because of its location. But I would say mostly the light. We're like, wow, that's it, that's, that's it. We stripped it down to its bones and then just started uh, redoing all the infrastructure. For 10 months straight. There were some periods where we just couldn't wait to get here after work, you know. You make it yours by the process of working on it. I don't like trims on anything. Also, no grills for the AC, so we invented our own way of doing it. Those are rules from all of our projects. You could even see that we're using tomato cans or recessed cans as a joke and fun, and the color is amazing. It's a coming together or a coming apart through these processes. For us, it was a really fun, creative way of just feeling very aligned. Just really own the corners, the details. We don't get to do the work that we do in the office uh, without us being like that. And there's moments where I like to celebrate the imperfections, but the rest of it has to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs>